What's up guys, my name is Warren. I am a banker here in London and a property investor across the UK. My goal is to live on my own terms, to live free from property. So I'm looking for 3,000 pounds per month in property income in the next five years. If that's what you're into, if you wanna live free and live independently and be independently wealthy through property, subscribe, click on the notifications button. That's what my content is all about. So most boys, like me, me included, I wanted to be a footballer growing up. That was my goal, that was my dream. Sadly, I never made it as a footballer. I wasn't quite good enough. But as football idols, especially when we were younger then, we had idols. For me, it was Ronaldo. Not this Ronaldo, who is phenomenal, by the way, but the original Ronaldo. I called him the original Ronaldo because he was the first Ronaldo. The Brazilian Ronaldo with the silver R9, silver and blue R9s that I couldn't afford. Um, the butt teeth, he was an absolute beast. He's still the best striker that I have ever seen play football, kick a ball, bar none. And that's natural, right? When you're into something, when something is your passion, when something is your goal, you have idols. And those idols are usually the best in that particular field at it. Back then it was Ronaldo, Zidane was also quality, but you know, it was all about Ronaldo. Now, sadly, as I said, I didn't make it as a footballer, but I will settle for a career in property. I will settle for still retiring at 40, because most footballers retire around about 40, slash just before. I can still get that part of the dream, yeah? So for me, in property, similar to football, the people that I really look up to who are doing it at the most elite level are a family that you might not have heard a lot about, but I know a lot about them. They're called the Groveners, the most prominent person being the Duke of Westminster. Now, I did a video not so long ago on the Duke of Westminster. At the time, he inherited the title. Now, these people are aristocracy in the UK, by the way. At the time, he inherited his title. He became Became the world's richest person under 30. And it's funny because you never see him in the papers, right? You see your Kim Kardashians, you see your celebrities, you see your singers, your footballers, your, your sports stars, your actors, your musicians, they're all in the paper. And we talk a lot about their wealth as celebrities, but the true wealth, the level above them, lies within these families, these old money families. And you know, there are some new school tech millionaires like your, your Jeff Bezos's and your Mark Zuckerberg's and your Elon Musk's, but old money wealth. Um, this is one of the families. Now, the Duke of Westminster, as I alluded to, he is just over 30 now. So he inherited the title from his dad after his dad passed away. And he has a property portfolio estimated at around about 11 billion pounds. Now, it'll be hard to prove for certain, but that's probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest property portfolios owned by an individual in the world. You've got people like Donald Trump who's heavy into property. He constantly tells you how rich he is, that he's a billionaire, I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire. But his net worth, according to most of the reports on the internet, is only three billion. This person, the Duke of Westminster, his property portfolio alone, so we're not even counting other assets and other stuff that he owns, just property alone, 11 billion guys. Now for me and you, we're smart people. We look at people like that and we should be thinking, hmm, what they're doing is obviously working. So what can we do that they're doing at our level? We might not have the billions to play with that they do, but there are certainly some principles that they have used since they began. Everyone began somewhere. This family began back in the 1700s. I think their wealth dates back to, and they must have employed certain strategies and principles that we can look at and say, hey, if we replicate that today in this day and age, the likelihood is that we could become pretty successful in property too. So today we're gonna to look a little bit more forensically at how they made their money. What did they invest in? Did they invest in houses, flats, commercial property, etc. What did they invest in? How did they make their money? I'm a big fan of not reinventing the wheel. I'm a big fan of systemizing and making stuff as easy as possible whilst growing rich at the same time, guys. All about working smart and not hard. You do have to work hard as well, but let's work smart first and foremost. So let's have a look at their company website. Um, as you can see, it's um, a standard website. It's very surreal to know that sitting behind this is an individual slash company worth 11 billion. Um, really unassuming website. But yes, I like to start with the About Us page because it gives you an overview of what they do. So it's an international organization whose activities span urban property, urban property, so cities, uh, food and ag tech. So um, ag tech, I think that's agricultural tech. So they're into food and agriculture and growing stuff and cattle and livestock and all of that. Uh, rural estate management, so estates, those large swathes of land that rich people, Downton Abbey stuff, and uh, support for philanthropic, 
that's easy to pronounce, philanthropic initiatives, so charity and stuff. You can't be a billionaire without giving to charity. That's standard for a billionaire. Good PR. So me personally, um, the level that I'm at in terms of what I'm interested in, you know, I focus on cities. So at this stage of my investing journey anyway, rule out food, agricultural tech, and rural estate management. I'm not doing things at that level. I don't plan on owning farms, owning cattle, and managing large private estates. Uh, maybe at some point in the future, you never know. But, you know, urban property, right? So I'm really gonna focus on this. This company, been here for over 300 years. They're obviously doing something right. Urban property, we can take some cues from that. And we see further down that they invest in the world's leading cities. Now, of course, at some point, it will be absolutely a dream to invest internationally in other cities, but we all start from somewhere. Right now, we are in the UK. I'm based in the UK. I am in one of the world's leading cities already. And most of you are too. I know that the vast majority of you guys watching are based in the UK. So we immediately are in a great position in that we are investing in one of the most desirable countries to live in the world, guys, in the world. And I've said this in other videos, but the unique thing about investing in UK property is that UK is a country that everybody wants to live in. There is a small land mass, there is a high population, and there is an undersupply of property in this country. There's a reason why property is the second largest source of wealth amongst all of us here, because of the over demand and under supply over the long term. It causes prices to do that. And that's been happening for decades, by the way, guys. And as we scroll down, there's an overview. You can read more about the main types of real estate that they invest in. So it starts with over and property, food and agri-tech so you got a nice picture of uh, cattle there so I mentioned you know it's all about growing produce and managing cattle um, you know a lot of billionaires I know that Bill Gates actually invests quite heavily in livestock and, and food I think it's actually an interesting one guys because if you read up in certain areas um, the World Economic Forum Davos they talk a lot about food scarcity over the coming years. There is um, quite a large drumbeat around the fact that the population of the world is growing rapidly and there is a food shortage according to them coming um, over the coming decades. And I don't think it's a coincidence that you see a lot of billionaires investing in growing food, livestock, because it seems like it's going to be a very scarce asset over the coming decades. And, you know, billionaires don't do things out of the goodness of their heart. I think they're investing heavily in these areas for a reason, for control, for profit. But just something to think about. By the way, guys, if you're finding this video useful, drop a like and subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm and to get this video out there to more people. And now back to the video. And then also we see a bit at the bottom about rural estate management. So stewardship of rural estates, protecting, enhancing, and restoring environmental habitats. So these are huge swathes of land across the UK that they seem to maintain. But really, let's focus on urban property because this is the area that we really should be looking to study, see what they're doing in this area, and really mirror their success. So we can see that they focus on urban property across the world's leading cities, and they're focused in the UK, North America, Asia, and Europe. And let's read more to see if there's any other details that we can find here. So here we go. They develop property and manage property and invest in property. So if we were employees in a Grove in a group, you'd probably be able to work out three distinct um, business divisions there, property developments, so that's building developments, building flats, building houses from scratch, from the ground up, constructing them and selling them. Um, they also manage them, so they might retain some and manage them. So if you live in a flat, for example, like I do, you pay a service charge every year. That service charge goes to the block manager because you need somebody to manage these developments. They need to manage the outside, you know, manage the green spaces, rubbish collection, um, cleaning, security, all of that good stuff, guys. That is really real estate management and that's why you pay a service charge. So they're involved in that. And also they invest. So I'm inferring from that that they don't just build their own developments, but they invest in others that are built by other third parties. And you can clearly see here that diversification is a big part of what they do. They're across the whole of Europe, they're in all of Asia, North America, um, and the UK, which of course is part of Europe. And you know, when it comes to risk, I work within risk, and some of you might also understand this already, but if you don't, 
Diversification is one of the foundations of risk management. It's all about not having your eggs in one basket, basically. So if you're a property investor and you invest all in one city, really extreme hypothetical example, but say a hurricane sweeps through that city and destroys all of the houses in that city, in that town, in that area, because you might not be across the whole city. Say you're just in one particular area of a city and a hurricane sweeps through there, you're finished in terms of your ability to earn income and operate those properties because you know they're destroyed. Hopefully you've got insurance so, but to continue and flesh out this example, if say you had 10 properties in that area of that city that was destroyed by a hurricane, say instead of having 10 there, you had one there, one in another city, one in another city. So you had one property in 10 cities across the UK. That one property that's been destroyed in that area of that city by that hurricane, you know, obviously that's a loss, but you have nine others that are spread in different areas. That's really an example of how diversification works. You wanna have your eggs in different baskets so that if risk is concentrated in one area, the other areas still carry on performing and you can still achieve your objectives and goals. So diversification is obviously something that this company think about and, um, and execute on. And there's a few more gems here, guys. So they talk about their business. It says it demands a deep understanding of the cities and local communities in which they operate. And I echo this again. They talk about unique experience and intimate knowledge of the local markets and communities in which they work. And just in case you didn't get it the first two times, they repeat it again deep appreciation and understanding of local markets. Guys, research, 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 knowledge is key. So you've seen in my other videos, I like to take a numbers-based approach. So when I'm looking at investing in an area, I'm not investing there just because I like it or I like the sound of it or the people up there are really nice. I invest based off of knowledge, based off of statistics. You have to know where you're investing inside out and how do you do that? So if you take the time and effort to look guys, there's so much information and statistics and data out there to help you inform and make really good, sound, profitable investing decisions. So look for the data guys. And then once you've looked for the data, you wanna back that up. You wanna reinforce your research that you've done at a macro level by getting closer to the ground and asking local agents, state agents, letting agents, you know, what the streets are on a street by street level. What are the good places to invest in? You wanna join local forums. And then ultimately you wanna go and visit yourself, get your feet on the ground, and you know, make a final decision based on your impressions of the area. So guys, Information is out there and you can do it. It just takes time and effort. And then let's dive back into the company website and have a look for a few more principles that we can learn from this highly successful company and take for ourselves and apply to our own property journey. So as you can see here, they break down their investing by the regions that they're in. And again, this links back to the point that we made about diversification. They're in different continents of the world, so they're diversified geographically. And they're also diversified in terms of the actual types of properties that they invest in. So when we look at the uh, Europe section of the uh, website, you can see that they're throughout Paris, Madrid and Stockholm and they develop mixed use properties. Now, mixed use property is something that I'm keen to go in further down the line. Mixed use property is essentially a property that's split between commercial and residential. So if you go out and go for a walk around your local neighborhood and find a corner shop, you'll see that a lot of the time we have the corner shop on the bottom level, the ground floor level, and then above that, there's actual flats. There's residential properties above that. And that's split. That's all one single property, right? It's split between different uses. That essentially is mixed use. And you can have that on larger scales, right? It can be a whole development. So you, where I live now, I live in a development of flats. And on the ground floor of some of these blocks, you have like a huge Sainsbury's or a coffee shop. So what they're doing here in terms of mixed use is another good way of diversifying their portfolio. And then let's have a look at Asia. One thing I want to draw your attention to is that they operate and they do a lot of joint ventures and they mention this in other areas of the website but they do joint ventures with like-minded best-in-class partners you also see this mentioned in their diversified property section of the website again there's that principle again co-invested with like-minded partners once again something that i'm not doing right now but i absolutely do want to go into partnerships further down the line great thing about partnerships is that you're spreading the cost so if you co-invest with somebody you're both usually putting in a certain percentage of the required funds to get the project done so you are spending less and you are actually de-risking yourself in the process the ideal scenario for me would be to have 
investors giving me all of the money and me doing the projects for them. I know several people who operate their property businesses like this. All they do is that they identify and manage the projects. And I say all they do, I use that term lightly because it is a lot of work, but essentially they're not putting up any of their own money guys. And that is partnerships. That's the type of partnerships that I'm looking to move towards in the near future. So you'll see a lot more from me in the coming months and years when it comes to partnerships and projects. And I'll be putting lots more content along those lines on this platform. So really in summary guys, I think we've seen here that there's quite a few really key principles and lessons that we can apply to our own property journeys. We don't have to be billionaires like the Duke of Westminster to apply these principles to our own journeys. And they are, just to recap, urban locations, so property in good city center, thriving locations, diversification, so diversifying by geography where you're investing and the type of property that you invest in. Knowledge and expertise, guys, I love research. I'm a nerd. I know not everybody likes research, but I, could spend hours in the spreadsheet just looking through potential property prospects. I'm all about Excel. I can live in Excel, guys. So knowledge and expertise through research, putting in the time and the effort. And then lastly, guys, partnerships, joint ventures. You wanna vet the people that you're gonna work with. You can exponentially increase your returns and your long-term wealth and de-risk yourself in the process if you work with the right partners. And they don't necessarily have to just be business people. That can be a family member, it can be a friend, it could be the partner you're with. Partnerships come in all shapes and sizes, guys, so think outside of the box. So that was today's video, guys. I hope you found it useful, guys. Share it with somebody else that you think would benefit from it subscribe like i'm on tiktok too so follow me over there i'm on instagram so follow me over there as well and i'll see you guys soon